But let's talk now to the chief executive of First Rand, which today announced a new investment management franchise, uh, Ashburton Investments, the group's fourth financial services franchise alongside FNB, RMB and Westbank. And as we get more on this deal, the future of investment management and the local economy, joined by First Strand CEO Siswe Nkasana. Siswe, good evening to you. Uh, Ashburton isn't new. It already exists offshore, but now you're bringing it into South Africa, I presume. Yes. You say that uh, it's an opportunity because momentum uh, was unbundled from the group in 2009, and since then asset management has been a, a gap in the portfolio. So let's start by reminding us why you unbundled momentum to create this gap. Well, we unbundled Momentum because it was a good thing to do for Momentum because they wanted, they were looking at growth opportunities. Uh, they identified especially the middle to lower end of the market as a gap which existed in the market. And what was then RMB Asset Management, which is today uh, Momentum Investments, uh, was naturally part and parcel of that business. Yeah. So it made a lot of sense for it to, to go. And obviously for first round, it left a gap in the market, yeah. and which is why we today launched Ashburton Investments. Well, tell us a bit about what Ashburton is at the moment and what you're going to do now with it in South Africa. Well, what it is today is we have assets under management or under administration to the total amount of about 110 billion rand. And this includes uh, some of the assets that came from BJM or Newark Card B BJM or some of the assets that are under uh, management from our wealth business. So we simply taking those assets and, and really creating a platform through Ashburton Investments which will provide investors, uh, both institutional as well as retail investors, with a platform to invest in traditional assets as well as in what we call <coughs> alternative assets. In other words, we want to give investors an opportunity to invest in some of the capabilities and skills that sit within the bank today to originate assets, yeah. that some of which may not even be um, available to investors. And we want to create this platform uh, you know, as a new age yeah. investment management platform. Well, I'm going to ask uh, our mini panel here. Of course, Wayne is with Momentum no, Asset Management. So you were unbundled. Yeah. <laughs> now, we are, now you're competitor. Now, since we're, this is an overtraded market. Margins are thin. What's the competitive edge? Well, the competitive edge is one we have the skill that sits in our uh, banking platform today, you know, especially through RMB as well as uh, FNB, uh, to originate assets that we believe investors will be interested in. For instance, I mean, obviously you have the traditional assets that all the asset manage man managers would have, uh, but you know, we have assets, uh, for instance, our private equity portfolio, uh, you know, all the investments that we're making in the continent, as an example which may not necessarily be available to investors today. So we hope to be able to make those available. So, and you know, we've proven uh, you know, to be quite successful in starting new businesses. So we're using the platform that already existed uh, to offer opportunities with a skill that sits within the bank today, obviously with a, with a fiducial mindset to offer those investments to, to the market. So you know, you'd obviously like, have liked them to come to you with uh, the, the portfolio, but... Well, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, history has showed that um, bank-owned or insurance-owned asset managers don't perform as well as independent firms <laughs> in <laughs> South Africa, but also globally. Um, so I'm sure you've thought about that. Uh, what are you doing differently to avoid that? Or is Ashburton a part shareholder in this instance? Well, I guess, you know, one of the key reasons why uh, some of the asset managers that sit within large institutions, especially insurance companies and so on, don't do that well is because a number of reasons, you know, the size is a factor and, and so on. Uh, but, you know, in our case, we have to fight for these investments. In other words, performance mm -hmm. uh, is going to be very key, which is why we are probably going to be playing a lot more skill game as opposed to a scale game. Presumably, uh, says where you're going to, you can't just put up a name yeah. and say this is a new investment. Do you get in a couple of stars from other places to give it impetus, individuals? Well, in terms of our distribution platform, probably yes. You know, that's what we're going to be looking at. And we'll use different, you know, various distribution mechanisms, including, for instance, you know, the independent financial advisors and so on. But we have a platform. Uh, you know, for instance, if you're targeting high ultra net worth individuals, as an example, we have a platform within which to do that. Mm. And so, yes, we'll be targeting, you know, to grow this business, to bring some of the skills that we may not have within the group at the moment, uh, to make it really a different, and we believe, an alternative, you know, play in the asset management space. Mm. 
I would like to ask my little mini panel, uh, Gela and, um, and Wayne. Uh, you talk about, you have a history, and it's true, in, in the first round group, FNB and Outsurance, a disruptive presence in their particular markets. Now, you're saying this Ashburton will be a disruptive presence in the investment uh, management space. Does it apply in the investment management space? What could disruptive mean? Well, it must just be a new product offering because, I mean, Caesar is obviously right. Most of the, most of the traditional asset management houses or platforms essentially offer the same type or, or very similar product ranges. Okay. So if you can source new products, it can be a little bit different. But distribution is a difficult game. I mean, yeah. um, a lot of banks have tried the so-called bank assurance distribution for many, many years and haven't been able to move that much volume through the system. Yeah. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier, it's a highly competitive market, yeah. this. Well, to the extent that uh, First Rent has brand equity with a client in the banking space and that client wants to experience the investment management functionality, you know, that's where the you know, uh, prospects really come from, that, 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 that share, of wa uh, share of wallet of that customer. Uh, and that will prevent people like us from actually getting to that customer because he has brand equity with First Rent. Mm. Uh, so, so you've got the brands like RMB, like FNB, all those brands, and you presumably will root people from them to the new opportunity. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, we're going to be looking for new uh, clients as well, you know, because if you look at whether it's institutions as an example, which we may not have as, as big clients today, uh, we distribute through other platforms at the moment, you know, some of the assets that we originate in the bank. Yeah. So we should be able to identify as well as capture some of those clients that may not be our clients today. Mm. I have to ask, some of this, you know, is the sort of thing that you would say, but, it, you know, mm. it's not clear if it's the sort of marketing stuff. The financial crisis has shown the fault. Uh, this is your, uh, the head of it, Borsal Krobler. Yes. Uh, he's saying the financial crisis has shown the fault lines in a very traditional, single-minded approach. We will combine traditional investments with non-traditional, but at the same time aim to provide returns with an acceptable measure of risk. Isn't that what you guys do? I think we all um, want to say we do that, and, and some people do it successfully and others don't. So what, how are you going to present this so that it sounds different? Well, you know, one of the things that the bank is really good at is to understand risk and to be able to um, mitigate whatever risk. You know, it may be you know, market risk. You know, we were just talking about market risk earlier on and so on. So we bring that kind of mindset of risk management to asset management. In a way, we believe that is slightly different from how everybody else actually does it. I want to now talk about, uh, well, good luck with it. It sounds good. It's, a, it's an established <coughs> business which you, you're extending. I want to talk about First Rand. This is, suits the First Rand model, I think, of the big four banks. It's the only one where it actually is in divisions already, whereas the others tend to be more monolithic. It suits your model, doesn't it, to add bulk things on? No, it does. Uh, you know, one of the reasons, yeah, a lot of people have been asking us the question, you know, why didn't we brand this uh, first brand asset management as an example? We're quite happy to have different brands that are specialists in their own area. That's why... You like know, West Bank, it has no name of FNB on it or absolutely. First Rand. Yeah, so that's exactly why we decided to launch it as Ashburton, because it already has, as Ashburton as a name, a brand presence. You know, some of the investors already are accustomed and used to that name, and we felt it was exactly the right platform. Mm. It differentiates. So we don't, we don't run a business with a monolithic brand, a monolithic mindset. You know, we want to have all our businesses become specialists in their own individual areas. What about your call on where we are at the moment? We've had low growth, people are gloomy, we've had uh, mining numbers out there, are not too good, and uh, the RAND has been moving around. So now your job, in a sense, is no one else in the bank has to do what you've got to do, which is make a big picture call every day when you get to the office and just keep an eye on things. What are you thinking at the moment for the banking sector, for the country? Well, I mean, clearly, as far as a country, the macroeconomic environment is concerned, you know, it, it is tough, you know, no doubt about that. Uh, yes, there are, you know, positive signs. For instance, you know, the National Development Plan, to the extent that, you know, government is now starting to implement some of the projects that are identified in the NDP is a positive, positive sign. There are issues, clearly, in terms of just the global in environment. And, you know, Wayne Makari talked about that earlier on. But in our own space, as a bank, you know, we always try and outperform the macros. And, you know, we believe we, you know, doing exactly the right things. Uh, so we're positive in as far as our story is concerned. 
uh, in the context of clearly a tough environment. But you know, there are a lot of growth opportunities in this market. Yeah. And there are growth opportunities that present themselves in the continent, a lot of the countries that we've identified, including India. Uh, so we we continuing really to grow our business, actually. I'd be more convinced about Africa than South Africa at the moment, Wayne. Yeah, look, I mean, South Africa is a tough, a tough place. But excuse me, a quick question about the whole banking environment. Mm. Do you think the, the unsecured loans have gone ex-credit? Do you think they'll come back and bite at some stage? Or, or do you think the overall level of unsecured credit is still manageable within the country as a whole? Because, I mean, we've seen credit bubbles overseas and yeah. Mm -hmm quite a few times in the past. What's your, what's your take on that? If you take the total unsecured lending book in the country from all the players, in the context of you know, where it is and some of the risks that may uh, you know, present themselves in the credit book, in that unsecured credit book, you know, I don't think it's an unmanageable situation. I think the situation is manageable. And, and particularly, you know, if you look at uh, some of the players that you know, saw the signs earlier on and started to uh, pull back and as well as started to make uh, provisions, additional provisions, you know, I think we've done a lot of that. Uh, and therefore, yes, in terms of growth, we're still going to see some growth in the unsecured lending space. However, it's not going to be at the le same level that we saw in the last two years. I think we we'll just have to accept that. But doesn't that actually create a problem because the bulk of the growth was coming from unsecured lending. Uh, the non-unsecured lending markets, if, if not the high income markets, if we're going to call it that, medium to high income markets were very slow. Uh, what, what then do you see for, for, for growth if the unsecured lending market is uh, tapered down? Well, it, it depends on, on each different bank. Uh, you know, each different institution is going to have a, a different mix in terms of how their asset portfolio looks like, as well as how their revenues actually look like. You know, in our particular case, for instance, we started a couple of years ago just focusing on growing our transactional income. Mm -hmm. So there's a much bigger component of our growth as opposed to interest income, especially coming out of unsecured lending. So it's not a big issue in our own lives. Mm -hmm. You know, we still have a lot of growth coming through from various parts of our businesses. In fact, all of our businesses are doing quite well in, 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 it, in a number of areas. Um, and of, of course, you know, those players who may have generated a larger portion of their growth in revenue or profit, you know, coming out of the unsecured lending state are going to feel the heat as the slowdown happens. Mm -hmm. Siswe, I'm going to turn your famous FNB line on you, and uh, if uh, the government said to you, how can we help you, Siswe and Kasana, head of First Rand, what would you say? Well, I would say, I mean, clearly, as a country, we need to stay the course in terms of the macroeconomic policies that we have, uh, in terms of, you know, trying to make sure that we can manage our deficits. I think it's important to manage that as a country. And for government, you know, how can they help us? I mean, clearly, We've seen a huge increase in regulations, not just in this country, but you know, offshore, overseas, and so on. And the cost of doing business has increased. So I think what we need is not more regulations. We need more effective regulations. Because you know, at the end of the day, if we're finding it more difficult to do business, uh, it uh, invariably affects how, how much contribution we make as financial institutions to, to our own economies. Mm. So I would, I would ask for more consistency in regulations because you know, and again we see signs, for instance, of regulations that are coming from other departments, other government departments, but that affect you know, banking or financial institutions or the financial service sector broadly mm. you know, in a very adverse way. And I don't think that's, that's necessarily the right way to go, especially in a market which is tough as we are facing now.